Yeah, it's been We're a here with the King of the Mountain State New Line Cage Fighting Podcast. I'm here with Keith No and the legendary Teddy Bear. How you guys doing? Doing good, man. That the name of this show was a mouthful, but gonna have like, to work until I like a long title. Really lets you know what's going on. Yeah, man. Yeah. The big news is Chase Hill Promotions, KG Promotions has merged. Uh, gonna be one mega promotion. Gonna start covering all of West Virginia. Gonna move into Kentucky. Got uh, got some big plans, man. Nobody really saw this coming. We've been talking for a few months off and on. The times were right. The stars aligned. It's going to be a big thing. It's going to be really good for the fighters. I think the fighters are going to benefit you know, the most from this. And uh, that's something I, Teddy Bear, I've talked to you a little bit about. You know, we're going to keep your guys busy, as busy as they want to be. Heck yeah. Yeah. I'm, when I heard the news and you guys were talking about every three to four weeks, I was really excited for all the fighters yeah. in the area to have that kind of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. When I was growing up, man, or well, not really growing up, I was, I started fighting around 19. Didn't really have that kind of opportunity. You know, you would get to fight and would come, come around once a year. Then the other one would hit Williamson. So, you know, I could fight really twice a year is about all I could do back then. Yeah. I didn't even know amateur MMA was a thing. It was illegal in West Virginia. So, yeah, man. It's, it's really, really good opportunity. It's wish, you know, I wish it was something that I had when I was, when I was younger, you know, I would have fought every month. I would have fought sure. every single time. Yeah. So we got some big things coming. You know, we had new line cage fighting 10 planned for August 6th at the Charleston Civic center. And now this is going to be King of the mountain state. And we're going to have uh, the, we're going to have a couple championship fights. We got the semifinals of the heavyweight tournament. We're going to have a lot of uh, non-tournament bouts and getting a, get a look at some dudes that that are uh, wanting to be in the next tournaments uh so i guess in 2023 we're going to start having uh tournaments in every weight class we're going to have we're talking about doing some kickboxing tournaments if we can get enough guys we may do some mma tournaments at the new line events um big things coming man big things coming and uh we had a pro fight announcement to um, hit that hit did we announce that today or we announced that yesterday? Yeah, it dropped this morning we got alex morning. davis Facing Jared Burns, both guys coming off really good wins. You know, mm -hmm. Alex, we saw one of the best comebacks of all time. Yeah. Well, one of the best I've ever seen for sure at a local level against Jeremy Chapman, who I think a lot of people thought Alex was biting off more than he could chew. We saw in the first round, Alex get dropped really bad. And I thought it was over. I really did. I didn't know yeah. if he was going to make it up from that. Didn't know if he was going to be able to come back and he did Chapman gassed and Alex still hung in there and was staying strong and ended up TKO in him. Yeah. And then what? Burns last Burns last week, man, pulls off a big upset uh, with Joel Baker. I mean, I don't know if you want to call it an upset, man. I mean, Burns got that dog in him, you know, you can't, you can't count Burns out of any fight. Yeah, when, I, go ahead, Teddy. Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say when that match was made, I told Chase that Burns wins that fight. He told yeah. me about it. I was like, man, I was, I was like, Burns don't win that or Burns don't lose that fight. That, that's Burns fight. He wins that fight. What he lacks in skill, the kid makes up for in just courage. He's he's yeah. a tough kid. He's he's not very skilled. I won't lie. Um, anyone that's watched him fight, but he's got balls the size of watermelons. Yeah. He just well, comes the, in I, there and goes for it. I trained yeah, with yeah. the guy, and you know he came down to the gym in hearts, and we got to spar a little bit and work. He's all heart. Like he he's mm -hmm. very green. He's new to the sport, but he's really hungry, and you can tell he's got something to prove. And I think. Uh, a lot of people were counting him out there in that fight. They thought it was going to be a setup fight for the other guy, and he proved them all wrong. I'm looking forward to see if he can do that again. Yeah. I was, I was at Joel Baker's very first fight. I don't mean to talk over you, Keith, but yeah, it was at 147 pounds. Whoa. So every time I see him and he's fighting over 200 pounds, I'm always thinking, man, he's – he should not be fighting this big at all because he's only like five, six or five, seven. And he mm -hmm. wasn't fat. He, he wasn't really fat. He was stocky, but he's just, yeah. he's so naturally smaller. He shouldn't be fighting these big boys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've we've, been through the got, same thing, uh, you know, fighting at 165 for my first fight and then moving up to heavyweight in these most recent fights, dude, the yeah. power difference is just crazy. Like it's substantial, man. It's I fought as low as. I fought as low as 160, and I fought as high as 284. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's weird carrying all that extra weight and then fighting. So you know, the speed, the speed was kind of in my favor, but you know, it's it's weird getting used to that kind of power that the bigger guys bring. Yeah, and, uh, that's I don't have any speed to begin with, so I'm in trouble. Yeah, power. That's something that both 
Burns and Davis bring, man. I mean, Davis is uh, – I mean, he's been knocking dudes out left and right. The last guy to go the distance – well, he went the distance at uh, Madison, King of the Mountain State, and then he went the distance with Eric Oden. But, I mean, other than that, Davis has been putting people out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he um, he's another one. He's still, he's still kind of green. He's mm-hmm. got a, a – he can be a lot more fluid, but because he's just he's so stiff and rigid. I've I've worked with him quite a bit. I like Alex a lot, but he is tough. Like yeah. you can beat on him and he's not going anywhere. You might drop him, but he's gonna get right back up. Mm-hmm. And and that's what happened to Chapman. Chapman was the better fighter in that fight. Chapman was more explosive. He was a smoother boxer. He dropped Alex, but couldn't get rid of him, which is a big thing you need to do yeah. if you're if you're going to gas. And Chapman <clears throat> gassed, and Alex just works his ass off in the gym, and he showed that he had the better mm-hmm. gas tank, and he just he beat Chapman into the ground. I, it's going to be a really good fight. It's going to be fireworks for about the first three minutes, and somebody's probably going to sleep. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And Davis is uh, see the fight he had back in April with uh, Joshua Bowling. That was a fight a lot of people were thinking, you know, like that Davis is going to have to outlast him because Josh is so explosive and so smooth. Like Josh is very technical for for his size, and uh, nobody saw saw it coming. You know, Davis came out and uh, knocked knocked him out cold in what like thirty seconds. Like nobody saw that coming. I know, dude. Big, Alex big, does massive that hard. Uppercut. Yeah, I think Alex probably has hit me as hard as almost anybody. He hit me with an uppercut that I leaned right into when we sparred, and I remember it well. <laughs> Burns is surprising, too, though. I know sparring mm-hmm. with him, he's a guy you don't expect much, and then okay. he's faster than he looks. He hits harder than he looks, so it's a really interesting fight. Yeah, so I want to talk about the next one we have here, James Dodd and Isaac Iglesias. Now, I'm not familiar with Isaac but Teddy Bear I believe you're you know, you coach James and and I'm sure you know Isaac so yeah what what do you think about this one um this one this one's going to be interesting I've heard Isaac's name a few times I know he trains with Sam Jones and Gary Wolf and them guys and he's he's a big smooth boxer but what I've seen against Byron I wasn't really impressed with too much he fought real lazy um Tried to throw a check hook a lot. James is left-handed, and James is one of the hardest punchers that I've ever sparred with. So, and the fact, dude, for I don't want to get us off track, but James versus Gabe Lambert was absolutely insane to watch from the corner. Like, because yeah. Gabe, Gabe got dropped early and then got up and was like, no, I am not going away. And it, it was a badass fight to watch. James has an um, MMA background, doesn't he? Yeah, he, um, I want to say he's a four-stripe blue belt in jujitsu and um and what else he's two and one amateur mma right now but he he sidetracked that for the tournament he's not taking any more mma fights till after mm-hmm. after this to box he's uh he's three sitting three and oh yeah three and oh right now boxing and um and yeah he's just he's an animal he is one yeah. of those dudes that he's he's like labor or strong like if that makes sense like you know just yeah. an everyday concrete thrower strong mm-hmm. He grabs Absolutely. your arm and it's like, well, I guess I'm not getting that arm back. It's it's unbelievable from, you know, doing jujitsu, you know, for so long. You see guys like that all the time. You'll see bodybuilder type guys come in who are lifting all the time and look super strong. They look massive. But then you'll have a guy like that and they feel so much stronger when you clinch up mm-hmm. with them and arrest oh, them. Yeah. It's so weird. It's like functional strength. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've got the the other heavyweight semifinal. We have Eugene Edwards, Daniel Merriman. So I believe Daniel is coming off of a win over Jared Flannery and uh, Thomas Edwards. Flannery. Or, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Thomas. Yeah, you're Thomas good. Thomas Flannery. Yeah, and um, Edwards, man, he's coming off. He beat what Leon Mosheffi, I believe, in the first round, and then uh, who did he beat this last one? One Eyed Wolf. Uh, one Eyed Wolf. Yeah, Perez. Rob Perez. Yeah. So, and Perez was a tough dude too, man. We're down to the final four in this in this tournament, and then I believe we're gonna go. It's gonna be looking at October for the finals. So we want you know I'm not I'm not super familiar with these guys yet. You know I need to go back and watch a lot a lot more of their video. I need to talk to the guys. You know it, it's kind of weird talking about some fights and I don't have the information on the dudes, but you know, we're going to get there. That's what's so interesting about this merger. You know, Keith and I come in from new line. There's a whole new group of fighters to learn about and start watching. It makes me excited. It really does. 
there's so much talent in the state there's of so West much Virginia. Depth, right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we can, uh, uh, I've got to say Ohio too, because of you guys, yeah. we came over, you know, we had a, a focus of MMA and kickboxing with, you know, we were filling cars with boxing, but you know, we joined an organization that's got you know elite boxing at the amateur and pro level. And, and I think uh, a lot I'm, of people, I'm excited to see these guys. I think a lot of people I've been, you know, people have been reaching out to me. I know they've been reaching out to you. They're wondering what the future is going to hold for these two organizations. I know talking to you, talking to chase, you guys have big plans. You're talking about yeah. expanding into other States, you know, growing, mm-hmm. growing the market, uh, getting these pay-per-views up and, I think it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, man. We're, we're talking about doing, uh, once we really get the ball rolling, man, every three to four weeks. Um, so, you know, n- new line cage fighting is going to keep going. King of the Mountain State's going strong. Um, definitely looking at taking NLC into Kentucky. Um, you know, Kentucky's got a really strong MMA scene. And, uh, you know, the boxing in West Virginia is super strong especially you know we've got guys coming a lot of our fighters are coming out of ohio Kentucky, but you know like the boxing scene here is really strong and uh the mma scene in kentucky is really strong so definitely gonna look at uh look at that you know and then chase you know currently living down in jacksonville you know we've got our eyes on that market as well so may be able to start getting some of these, I would, some I of these would definitely enjoy a trip to florida that would be nice <laughs> I, I, yeah. I don't think we'll be bringing too many fighters that far <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I think it would be, you know, really cool, you know, really cool experience for some of these guys to get to travel to Florida to, to compete. Um, you know, I would I think it would be really interesting. And Jacksonville is a big place and a lot of nice venues there. We've also, you know, I'm living in Lexington, Kentucky right now. I still got my house in Chapmanville, so I'm kind of back and forth. But we're, we're definitely looking at tapping into the market here in Lexington. And it's, you know, a huge population, lots of gyms, lots of fighters here. There's a lot of good fights to happen here as well. So a lot of good fighters that are going to be joining us that nobody's seen yet. You know, we're, we're talking to a lot of new guys right now. And uh, we're seeing a lot of a lot of boxers that are competing in USA boxing that, you know, they've been wanting to kind of come over, but we weren't having enough events to keep them busy. But now, you know, now we will. So we're seeing a lot of USA boxing guys start to transition over, and that's going to be some some really good talent coming over to compete. Heck yeah, I'm I'm super excited about the um, having so many shows, mm-hmm. having all the opportunity because right now we're we're fighting a lot, but we're fighting a lot between like four or five different promoters. Yeah, and it, it'll be nice to just have you guys consistently three to four weeks mm-hmm. every yeah. every month. Hey, we know, we can hit this show. We we didn't hit these guys. Don't worry about it. We can hit these or your yeah. your arms not feeling too good. That's fine. New line King of the Mountain has another one coming coming up yeah. three weeks from now let's go oh yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna need a lot of fighters too you know if we're gonna be doing fights that often everybody can't fight every month you know some of these guys will but so you know a lot of these guys like to take two months in between fights and really you know really prepare themselves and some guys are just trying to you know rack up as many wins in a year as they can so you know if we're gonna fill 12 to 14 cards in a year you know we're gonna need a need a really big roster and that that's um I mean that that's something I'm just super excited about, man. Just to see where where are we gonna be at a year from now. We're gonna see some dudes right now that might be two and zero. Oh. You know, what are they are they gonna be ten and zero, oh, twelve and zero? Oh, you know, eight and four. What, you know, what are these guys gonna be a year from now? And they're gonna be super experienced. And then we're gonna be having a lot of a lot of new guys coming in. Um, and and some of the some of the MMA guys on our end are looking at getting into boxing. You know, but boxing's definitely having a resurgence right now, like big time. Um, it, it was funny. You know, when I was really just an MMA promoter and I'm seeing these, you know, Tyson Fury major events, Jake Paul events, and I'm kind of getting upset. I'm like, man, like, you know, Jake Paul is kind of really, <laughs> really hurting the MMA scene. But now I'm excited. I'm like, dude, yeah, this is awesome. So, you know, New Line started to transition into a boxing company the last few months. You know, we had our first boxing event in January. Then we had another one in April. And uh, we had um, October and november already set up for boxing so um it's it's our boxing roster we're starting to starting to grow so it's really cool to see you know see the two of us together and just seeing what we can do for sure and the cool thing now that wasn't around when i was younger because when i was younger and fighting the usa boxing Mm -hmm. and even when i fought pro there was um (laughs) never the ability to watch from home like there is now yeah with pay-per-view all, all mm-hmm. the small online pay-per-views that are around now i remember my pro debut was ran the was a uh online company that did online pay-per-views it was like it was nesportstv.com and peter zimbor ran it 
And it was like just baby fresh off the ground. No one had ever heard of doing anything like that before. But then after that, like, dude, that was the only fight I had until, um, shoot, probably 15 or 20 pro fights deep. And then Mm -hmm. this stuff started coming around, but still not as accessible as it is now. Now I got all my amateur fighters getting their fights commentated. Like I had smoking Jim Frazier would get on a mic by himself and just troll (laughs) both of us and and stuff like that. I don't know if you know Jim from, from the Pittsburgh area. No, but no. but he would just he would he was a super cool dude. His commentating ability was way less than professional. He he would roast <laughs> both fighters and not even care. And I don't. <laughs> there's some YouTube videos out there I can link you guys to. But yeah, but now the I guess the ease of access to all these mm-hmm. pay per views and all the legit broadcasting and they get to take their amateur careers serious like a pro would because you got the video to show your friends. You got the commentators Mm -hmm. to break it down. And a lot of my guys, they want to go pro, but they want to box, and they want to kick box six, seven more times, eight more times. And now with this merger, that's that's really going to make it happen. And I'm I'm super excited. So something that we're going to be releasing soon, probably the next few weeks, if not sooner. Um, You know, MMA, you have tapology.com. You've got the rankings breaking down from, uh, you know, world rankings all the way down to, you know, by state. You've got pro rankings, amateur rankings, everything. So that's something we're looking at doing is really having a ranking system within our league. So um, we're we're not going to do it for bo- for uh, kickboxing and MMA right now, but we're going to start we're going to start releasing our uh, rankings by division for. Uh, amateur boxing and um i think that's something the guys are going to get excited about i think it, it might piss off a few guys you know hey man like why am i ranked number eight i should be no, at least number four you know prove it you know prove us wrong man and you know the rankings are going to part well no, you know that happens with the ufc it happens with anybody yeah no guys rankings. are never going to be happy with rank. yeah it's going to be based on you know the wins you've had and, um you know the performances and everything so but yeah we're, we're going to be releasing rankings we're going to start keeping better stats that's that's one thing that we've been doing in NLC. We have full stats on every fight. So I love I love that about the NLC too. Yeah, it don't, the only thing that sucks is it's been me sitting there doing the stats, watching video in slow motion. <laughs> I had oh, Dave wow. uh, Dave Fournette help me do. Um, I think he did some of NLC seven stats, and then uh, but other than that, NLC one all the way up through. Uh, the Baileysville brawl. I've done one hundred percent of the stats myself. Cody Abbott did a few do. fights back in the day. Oh I tried yeah, yeah, yeah. In one fight for him, and I didn't have a way to watch it in slow motion. So I was trying to watch it all in real time and <laughs> count all the strikes. So I ended up watching it like a thousand times. I thought I was gonna go nuts by the end yeah. of it. And I was like, Keith, I can't handle it. Oh, <laughs> I don't yeah, know how yeah. you do it. Dude, it's tough and it's it's exhausting. And uh that that's something uh, probably after this, after we go, after we finish this video, I'm gonna be getting a few of these uh NLC nine video or NLC nine fights uh stats done so I can update the website with our stat leaders and stuff. But that is something we're we're looking at doing for sure. I don't know if we're gonna go back and get all the stat videos from his events, but we're you know we're definitely gonna go look at all the uh, wins losses and get all that. And uh, you know it, uh, me, I, I love stats. I love I love all that kind of stuff. So I I, I want to do it, but at the same time I'm like man, he Chase had hundreds of fights over years. I kind of I don't know how we're gonna get that done. We we'll have to get a few people on this. I, yeah, get I, I would start right fresh things. now. Yeah, yeah. I like don't, don't backdate idea. it. Go now. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of ranking people. I think I'd really get into that. It's like yeah. back in the MySpace days when you could be like, mm-hmm. these are my top ten friends. If you mess up, <laughs> you're going down the list. Well, what, what was I, it? That they released some kind of uh, album, right? Like there was a CD, like a music CD you could buy. And if you bought that CD, it gave you a code for MySpace. So you could up, like up your friend, your top friends to like 24. So everybody was buying that CD and then that CD went platinum. <laughs> I didn't know about that. See, yeah. I only had yeah. the top 10. I wasn't cool. I think enough. it started with four. It started with four or six. And then, then they started having different things, but you had to do certain things to get more top friends. And then you always had these people that were mad at you. And then my wife was always mad because my friend Sean Galloway was my number one friend and she was number two. <laughs> and I think she threw a fit, so I bumped her down to three. <laughs> See, I had to lighten it up. We were getting too serious. All this fight talk, I had to say something. Yeah. People come to us for light entertainment. They're trying to make it through their days. They're going through a rough time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why they look, look at my face. Bear. 
Yeah. That's why we brought you <laughs> That's along. Where you went? <laughs> I told Chase when he when he told me we were bringing Teddy Bear on to commentate. I was like, people are gonna pay just to look at him. <laughs> look at him. Look at that shiner, man. Where'd that come from? Oh, that I did that to myself. Has Brittany been hitting you again? <laughs> no, no. She she one hundred percent has been hitting me. I'm She's I'm gonna get tired. You like it? She's I'm gonna get tired of all the taking all this. on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, no, I dude, I, I have to put the butt appreciation pictures up there. That's just something that has to happen. Yeah, every time I see it, I die. I don't care where I'm at, I die <laughs> laughing every time. So, well, I put it on my story today. We were walking out of Dollar Tree and I just snapped one real quick. And then she didn't see it until like eight hours later. The kids were like, Mom, Dad has your butt on his Facebook. <laughs> That's what I want to know. What's her reaction to those posts? Is she a fan of it? No, she's not a fan. No. <laughs> no, that's why I keep doing it. She's, she's like, like really? You. You're going to be snatched. Really she's going to catch that. you, and she's going to throw a big mule kick back at you. I hope. Beat me up a little bit. I'm into that. <laughs> no, this, this comes from he's Jeremy. For I am. So let's, who gave you that shiner? Uh, one of my fighters, Jeremy. He's also a pro heavyweight. Mm -hmm. is that mr karshner yeah oh, yeah okay. yeah we were mr. sparring karshner. we were sparring wednesday morning and uh i caught him with a with the nice overhand right and then pulled back and he just swung for the fence with the left hook and just that's pretty nice he, he's probably got a lot of anger build up right now yeah yeah he's having, get, having getting, cj uh, no show him twice two weeks in a row in a row two, with the same two. excuse both times yeah and yeah, like jeremy CJ offered Matthews. Jeremy was like, hey, I will come get you. I will pay for a driver. I will do whatever mm -hmm. I need to do to make this happen. And he's just like, oh, no, man, I can't. Like, you're not a fighter. Like, you are not a professional fighter if you refuse to fight after signing a contract two yeah. times in a row. Not once, twice. Like, just hang it up, Pitbull. Yeah. It took, so he, he no showed Jeremy at our show. He said that, uh, he told us he was like, how many hours away, Elijah? Like three hours out? No, we thought that he was, a, well, yeah, three hours from us. We thought yeah. he was about an hour and a half, though. We were going to go get him. Yeah. Well, he said well, he was he in uh, Lebanon, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. So your dad was in Pikeville. So your dad could have been there in 90 minutes. We got a whole yeah, we were gonna hey, can you pick somebody up? Him. So he was like, yeah, we just need to know where he's at. And then it took us like an hour for him to give us his location. But he wouldn't um, – he kept telling us where he was, and he was like three hours away. And uh, um, finally uh, we start – you know, he, he keeps being weird about it. Then we tell him, you're, you know, you can get a suspension from this. You know, you signed a contract. You don't show up. You get a really long suspension. You know, this is serious. So uh, he finally admits that he's not in Lebanon, Virginia. He's like 30 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. And there's no way we can get there, get him from there to Wayne in time for the fight. So, um, you know, we move on. And uh, and then CJ talks to me about lifting the suspension so he can fight the next week. I'm like, all right, you know, I'll talk to the commission and uh, see if you know, see if we can work something out. They're like, okay, you know, if he comes and fights this week, we won't suspend him. Same thing. Same thing. So also on the card coming up, we're gonna have Zach Gillenwater. You know, he's coming off a win. He's gonna be fighting Nolan Stanley, who's coming off another big win. Yeah, Both I believe these this guys, is gonna be the the middleweight tournament championship. Yep, absolutely. These guys I'm are really. Interesting fighter. Yeah, I've seen Zach fight a few times. I haven't seen Nolan, but I've heard a lot of good things about Nolan. I've heard he's the real deal. So looking forward. He had to that. a really good amateur background. I think mm -hmm. he's had he had like ten amateur fights and a really good record. I know Zach had a lot of fights through USA Boxing before he came over and started fighting for Chase. And he he beat he had Luke a pretty good record too. in the first round of the tournament, didn't he? Zach is pretty much the twin of Jacob Stant. They, they fight exactly the same. Mm -hmm. They're both bald. They're both tatted. They both have beards. Like, it, it's it's pretty uncanny the resemblance between the two of them. Like, their mm -hmm. facial resemblance is different, but as fighters, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. And then, um, and then we've got the lightweight tournament bout, lightweight tournament championship, Trevor Bell versus Andrew Toppin. Andrew Toppin versus Justin Milam, the rematch, which just mm -hmm. happened on Chase's last show. Absolutely insane fight. So it's a good first round. Um, I think it was the first round because I think in the second round is when everything happened. So in the first round, it's a good back and forth war. Bang, 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 bang. Milam's mm -hmm. a game day player. He, come, he comes to fight regardless. And Milam beat him, or Mil however you say his last name, but Milam beat him uh, last year on Chase's show down in Huntington. So th this was a rematch. 
And it come out, first round was amazing. Real good back and forth action. Second round, top and drops him three times. And Milam just will not give up. Gets up, gets in the ref. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But Toppin was way ahead on the cards. And Milam made it his mission in that third round to try to gun him down and get them three points back. But obviously, you're not you're not going to win a fight. Yeah. They get knocked down three times in a three round fight. It's not going to happen. But dude, he yeah. fought like it was going to happen. It was amazing. It, I got to yeah. call that with Don Pennington and Haley Pennington. That was a really good fight. So I'm looking forward to seeing how the new line lightweight champion will do with these guys. You know, we have Jacob Ray. He's got a 13 and two record. Um, and Jacob is he's you know he's still 19 years old you know still a teenager and uh, he you know he's been he's been busy and um, up until really the last up until the last two weeks you know the dude didn't train he just you know he would go out and work lo- do login or whatever you know whatever and just show up and fight how many and he trained with you what maybe five times over the past year Elijah? I, around probably five to, the kid has probably trained under 10 times in his whole life yeah. it's unbelievable the level of talent raw talent that he has mm-hmm. and you know i'm telling you the sky's the limit for jacob <clears throat> ray as yeah. long as he's willing to work for it and that's yeah. that's really the big question i think the win over teddy did a lot for his confidence and it's probably going to help him going forward Having yeah. a big win over a guy like Teddy, who's so respected. Yeah, I was, was honest to was God surprised sure. Teddy did not kick him. <laughs> Teddy was so nervous about to. only boxing. He was like, "Coach, he's like, I'm not a boxer. I can't mm-hmm. do this." And got in his head about him being the lightweight champ, and was just was a ball of nerves. I had to calm him down. Yeah. Like, dude, you're amazing in the gym. Both your kickboxing matches, you've won with your boxing. Trust yeah. me, I would never throw you in over your head. You got this. Just relax. And it, it was. A really good fight it was a close competitive fight it mm-hmm. wasn't one-sided either way it, it was really good and then yeah. teddy teddy thought he did enough to win it so he took that loss really really hard yeah but it, it was a good fight there's nothing to hang your head about on either side it was amazing now that first round something happened that and I, i'm su- <laughs> i'm just really excited oh that our referee matt jones is patient you know I'm I'm just super glad that he didn't just jump in and stop it, you know. So Jacob lands a shot. Teddy's mouthpiece comes out, hits the floor. Teddy goes down on hands and knees, picks the mouthpiece up with his mouth. He goes he down. He did and not it, just go like, down. Too, he dove to the ground and picked it up. Yeah. It was yeah. crazy. Now some that, referees, swan dive. some referees would see that and just come in and wave the fight off. Here's luckily the best Matt part Jones. Of, Matt, luckily Matt Jones. Has, the the best part up? of that whole story is Matt Jones, the ref. <laughs> I was over in the corner pretty close by. And mm-hmm. uh, when Teddy did it, Matt like looked at him like disgusted and he went, Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> after Matt, after the fight really good rep, man. after the fight matt come up to me and he was like what do you do to your guys at the gym that they think they need to <laughs> dive and get their mouthpiece with their mouth i was like i swear i don't do anything to them i yeah. promise man he that i'll tell you what though what he did there is better than what he did against matt Tennant though because when he lost his mouthpiece against matt Tennant, he just stopped and put his hands up while matt came and started blasting yeah him. He's figured out a new strategy. Yeah, new strategy. Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> Dude, that, that Tenet fight was brutal. And if yeah. anybody don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about Teddy Evans versus Matt Tenet on Mike Sh- Mike Shepard's show that was at the high school in Parkersburg. Mm-hmm. And, dude, that fight was that that fight, Teddy's hands is what made me say, "Hey, we're going to box. We're going to box a little yeah. bit." Because that fight was beautiful. Tenant brought yeah. it. Tenant was the number one, what the number one one thirty five or one forty five MMA fighter mm-hmm. in the state. Yeah, like it has so been he's, for a while. Yeah, he's no slouch. Like he's experienced yeah. it, and he brought it, and and Teddy yeah. took it to him. But yeah, yeah. knocked his mouthpiece out, and Teddy leans the ropes and's like, "Like, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that." <laughs> Teddy's that a guy met, that's man. never had an easy fight. Teddy's only like Teddy's fighting animals every time he steps in the ring or cage. He's not getting anything easy. Yeah. And, and he's uh, winning. Matt's yeah. tenant is the real deal, too. For him to mm-hmm. step in there against him, like Matt's one, Matt is one of the best. I uh, got to see Matt that time in Parkersburg that day we met at that doghouse mm-hmm. card. And I was there to watch Jacob LeMaster, who fought Tenet that night. And Tenet put it to him. His wrestling <laughs> impeccable. Yeah, mm-hmm. ten- Tenet's tough. <clears throat> Tenant fought the same night as you, Elijah, at NLC one in Williamson, West really? Virginia. Yeah, he fought the main event against he fought, Cody Abbott. Yeah, yeah. I so remember I you Cody, me about that. Cody was four and one. Matt was three and one at the time, and uh, they were the top two 
phantom weights in the state, man. They had a war. Um, Abbott it was, won uh, that it was fight, weird, didn't he? Um, Abbott won the fight. Decision. It was a, see. That's really it was a, it was a weird a thing. Fight. I'd love to see it mm-hmm. now that Tenet has progressed so much. Yeah, I would love to his see re- it too. His wrestling yeah. is on another level now. Because I believe Matt was thinking there was a fourth round of that fight. I don't know if you know if he was holding back for it because we turned the fight in as a five round fight. You know, five three minute round title fight, and nobody ever, nobody with the commission ever told me this is going to be three rounds. So at the end of the third round, you know, those four ring girls walking around with the round four card, and then. You know, the officials collecting the scorecards, fights over. It's like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh that was a long time ago. And uh that was that was a weird moment. Um, but yeah, yeah, Matt, I mean Matt Tennant was the real deal, man. And I've been trying to get him to come back and fight for New Line ever since, hoping, you know, hoping he would fight for uh some of our MMA titles, 135, 145. Uh try to get him back with a you know, Jacob will master rematch. That would that was something everybody wants to see. And I would like to see that fight in a cage, not you know, not in a ring. So that fight was so yeah. weird to me because like you know, I was there for Jacob, you know, rooting mm-hmm. for him, not cornering him, but I might as well have been because I was screaming so loud. He went out there, I think it's the first time he's faced a wrestler of that level. And Jacob's used to being able to wrestle guys. So I think when that didn't work, he start he he didn't know. He's like, I need to switch to striking. I need to strike with mm-hmm. this guy because I've got the advantage there. He kept trying to wrestle. He kept going to the well against a guy who's a better wrestler than him. I think yeah. that was where he's so green, you know, at mm-hmm. that point. He's had a lot more fights now. It would be a really good rematch to have. Yeah. <clears throat> Now, um, I'm going to come back to our uh, back to King of the Mountain State here. You know, we're doing some matchmaking right now. I mean, there's a lot of like possible matchups that, that we can do. A lot of interesting things, you know, especially 165, 175 range. You've got, you know, Lucas Spalding up here, um, Griffin Key, Brennan Kelly, Justin Sampson, Ethan Blackburn now in the mix. mix. Uh, if Denzel Chapman, if we can get him back in the boxing ring, um, Justin's got several guys out of his gym. Uh, Mitchell Reynolds, uh, Lionel James, and then you know, we got the guys that are still in the tournament. And then there's a lot of other names that have that are with Chase's organization that that I you know I probably just don't have on my list yet. But uh, I mean these box these boxing all of them these boxing divisions are going to be so deep. And then you know talking about throwing Jacob Ray in with you know the 135 guys that we have with King of the Mountain State. Um, there's a lot of interesting fights here. Uh, Devin Stanley, please. You know, Three and O MMA. That's exactly fighter. who I was about to bring up. Three and O MMA. Three and O kickboxing. Now he's one and O boxing, and uh, you know possibly you know if we can get him to do a little more boxing, man, just seeing seeing what he can do with it. Um, you know, Devin Devin's boxing debut was against two and O Ethan Blackburn, and uh, I mean that was that was a great fight. But you know, Devin showed he can box too. That was a good so, fight. I, yeah. I want to see a Brendan Kelly Jacob Stan rematch though. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that was. was uh, that, I would really enjoy that. That was There's, a classic case of just a spazzy <laughs> brawler mm-hmm. versus a polished boxer, and they gave it to activity. Mm-hmm. They went quantity over quality on that one, and it, it, it kind it kind of hurt my butt a little bit. <laughs> I, I yeah, Brendan Kelly's a guy. Brendan Kelly's a guy that anytime he's on the card, I mean, you're looking at fight of the night. I mean, no matter who he's fighting, he's going to bring it. He's going to he's going to fight his style. No matter who's in the other corner, um, and you know he's not—he's not, not going to beat around the bush. He's—he's he's not going to you know do anything tricky. He's—he's he's just coming in trying to take their head off, man. Uh, he's confident in what he does, and uh, he thinks it's you know, full throttle, like foot yeah. on the gas the whole time when he fights. But he's not very technical, and I think Stanton was a lot cleaner in that fight and landed the cleaner shots. But uh, you know, judging is strange sometimes. So that uh, that third round, it, you know, was it a slip? Was it a knockdown? I don't know. But whenever, you know, whenever. Well, I know, watched the replay. Billy Fox called it a knockdown. You got to yeah. score it a knockdown. Yeah, right. absolutely. That's the thing. That's what we talked about in the commentary. It's, you know, the guys I was commenting with didn't really know the rules. Like the ref decides. It's up yeah, the ref to him. Decides, yeah. Like his decision so one, stands <clears> no matter what. There was one judge gave that round. 10 9 to Brennan Kelly. And when the you best you can do replay, with a knockdown, yeah, the best you can do with a knockdown, if, even if you come back and win, you can get a, a 9 9 round. But that's what's interesting. Lose that, one, of the judges lose that that, one of the judges scored that, what, 9 9 or what? What's no, 9 All three. So 10, the one Kelly. judge, yeah, one judge had it 10 8 Stanton. 
One judge had it 9-9. One judge had it 10-9 for uh, Kelly. He didn't even factor in the knockdown. Yeah, which makes and, uh, no sense at all. That was me. I, w- I was stuck announcing that night. So when they handed me the scorecard, I was like, hey, how's this a 10-9? It, it can't be a 10-9. They said, well, you know, we can't do anything about it. We can't change what the judges do. You should so announce I saw, I was like, well, Jacob anyway. You should be like, Jacob Stanton, and just put the cards in your pocket and, <laughs> and walked away. Like, I don't know where the cards went. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes um, I wonder if the judges pay enough attention to to even be able to catch that, if you did do that. Well, I, I had a couple people tell me that I don't know who the judge was, and I, and I don't want to call out any names anyway, even if I knew. But a couple people told me that there was a judge over by our corner that was playing on his phone during the fight. That's not the first time I've heard that happening either. Which is a little bit sad. Yeah, there was. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to throw out any names because I do know who it was. There was a judge, not at my event, but at another event. He is now banned from West Virginia because he brought his uh, laptop or his iPad and was watching a uh, basketball game and while he was judging. <laughs> had a basketball game streaming case side, and uh, so he lost his license. They're not using him again. Uh, so it wasn't him. I can tell you that because he he was already banned. I don't I don't know which event he did to get to get banned on, but you know that that has happened before. Um, That's pretty funny, but yeah, that that fight um, that was a really good fight. I thought we won it. Could you have made an argument for Kelly without yeah. the knockdown? Yes, but I was in Jacob's ear. I was like, dude, the worst we're coming away with is a draw. There's no yeah. there's no way we don't come away with at least a draw. And then when yeah, I heard Kelly, that one card yeah. that gave him. <laughs> 10 9 last round. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, the only plausible card that got turned in was the 28 28 card. Mm-hmm. That's the only plausible one. And I don't even remember yeah. whose card that was. I, it was, it might have been Matt Jones' card, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know I don't remember um, who the three judges were, but I know uh, was a little bit wonky. And then I don't remember who the other guy, the other guy's the one that went 10 9, I think, for Kelly in that last round. Um, I'm thinking, no, the other guy had the 9 9. Oh, so was um, it that had the 10 9? No, I can't say. <laughs> I don't know if it shows. It might show on Box Rec. I don't know. That's, if that's what like, I'm looking uh, up right now. Yeah, I don't know if that's top secret or not. I don't know if that's like public information. If you can see what judge scored it, how. Um, okay. But- had it 28 29 for Kelly. Had it 29 27. So that means he didn't give Stanton a single round. Stanton got nine points every round. And then Brendan Hodge had it right 28 28. Brendan Hodge. Yeah, I don't Where know do who you that think is. Who's who is Brendan? These Hodge? bad decisions come from Teddy. I mean, we it seems like we're seeing them a lot. We're seeing and that one was a fairly close fight, but I've seen a lot worse decisions in West Virginia. You can have the rest of them, buddy. Um, a lot of it, a lot of it comes from people not knowing what they're scoring. Like a lot of a lot of these bad decisions I'll see it happens in fights like like this one. It's a quantity over quality, a guy that's just super uberly aggressive against a guy that's a calm slick boxer and they see this aggression and that's what draws their attention they're like oh he's he's doing all these things he should definitely he should be the one to win this fight and um and that's what it is like a a lot of the times you can split hairs but then a lot of the times like it's just it's a blatant like how did how did you get this score obviously you watch different fights and then at the same time, it's the instances where, oh, this guy was on his phone for rounds one, two, and three. Like, he probably just going off the crowd's reaction, happens to look up the last 10 seconds, see a guy land a punch and carry himself as a winner. That's why I always tell my guys after the fight, stand up straight. You're a winner. We can get tired once we get backstage. Mm-hmm. But you got to present yourself as a winner. Because if those judges are still filling out that last round, and they look up, and the guy that you fought is laying flat on his back, yep. and you're standing up beating your chest like a world beater, even if they didn't pay attention. They're like, oh, this guy just won that round, even if it's not true. And, like, that's what I told Eric to do against Matt because I, I looked over. I seen Matt was a freaking yep. just a blob on the ground. I was like, Eric, I think stand up. You won this fight. Present yourself as a winner. I'm, I'm what, still kind of I'm still kind of stuck on uh, I'm stuck I don't know if you on heard the me. I was over beside Matt. I was like, get your hands up, man. Put your hands up. You uh, act like you won. <laughs> Yeah. So well, I'm the guy who I wrote all the checks that night. I didn't write any checks for a Brendan Hodge. Who's Brendan Hodge? Dude, I'm telling you, that's what it says on box track. <laughs> that yeah. See, I'm looking at that. I'm like, is that I, I don't know. I didn't write. I didn't write Brendan Hodge a check. Who's Brendan Hodge? 
He's our it's, mystery judge. Yeah, the yeah. Brendan Hodge, judge. if you watch this, from now come on, forward. if we ever see a bad decision, we're blaming it on Brendan Hodge. No, he's already <laughs> Brendan, had, Brendan it right. Hodge had it right. <laughs> Brendan Hodge had it 28 28. We got to find him and congratulate him. Then. See, that's what I, I was thinking that too. I was thinking, you know, rounds one and two for Kelly, and then round three was uh, Stanton 10 8. And I mean, and, and I'm not saying rounds one and two were like, he didn't dominate. You know, those were close. I mean, you could really argue. You could almost argue any of the rounds either way. Yeah, I, and, I uh, told Jacob yeah. in the corner. I was like, hey, we lost round one. Because Jacob is a notorious slow starter anyway. Mm-hmm. He's he's built to be a professional. His style yeah. is professional boxing. He's built for long fights. When he gets to six and eight round fights, it's going to mm-hmm. be wonderful. Yeah. And that that's something I always struggled with. I hate short fights. Yeah. But I told him after one, I was like, hey, you got to turn it up. We we lost that round. And then I thought we won two. And going into three, I was like, we need this round big. I was like, it's 1-1. One, one. He's being mm-hmm. flashy. He's being aggressive. We need this round big. And when that knockdown happened, I thought we secured it. But yeah, other plans. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking. Uh, speaking been. of I close mean, decisions, that- speaking of close fights, there's somebody we've not talked about yet. That's moving over from this roster, and it's Matt Chris who just won our heavyweight title. Yep. yep. And that was a very close fight and a hell of a fight. All yep. grit and heart from both guys. Dude, that yep. like okay. So Matt Chris is one of the only fighters I've had to consistently. There's a there's an old trick that my grassroots coach Thank taught you. me. Ready for connection. It's if um if you got a guy that's unresponsive on the store, a guy that's gassing, you hit him in the dick with ice water. You pull that cup out. Ice water right down it. He's awake. I've had to do that to Matt three out of his four fights. The only Wish you'd fight have done it to Watts too. The only don't be using this against me. The only fight I didn't do it was the Joe Perry fight because Matt yeah. just controlled that fight. But that just tells you the wars that Matt has been in. He's he's only four fights mm-hmm. deep, and he fought Thomas Flannery, who was another giant, a southpaw. He fought Dalen Jimerson, who was a giant and a southpaw. And then he fought Joe Perry, which Joe is such a good dude for taking that fight. Because yeah. we, we got there. Matt's opponent absolutely no-showed. Lived in town. Lived right there in the town. And was like, hey, man, I I got stuff. I can't I can't come. And then Joe's guy no-showed also. And we walked over. like, hey, man, do you want to make this fight happen? And he looked Matt up and down. And he was like, not really. <laughs> but <laughs> But he did it anyway. Which which just shows his grit. I like I like Joe a lot. And then Joe's a good um, dude. He's got I guarantee guts, he's gonna, he is. Joe's and, gonna and, watch this. <laughs> and and Joe then is we, a big we, fan. Yeah. We fought Watts and Watts tried to tried to pull out on us and Matt let his mouth talk Watts right back into it. And I'm glad he did because that was a damn good fight. Yeah. Like going in, I'm not gonna lie, going in, I was like, Man, Matt, he already tried to give up. So put some pressure on him. He's going to fold. And he hit Matt with the crispest one, two in that first round I've ever seen. And Matt was on autopilot after that. Mm-hmm. Like he was like, Oh shit. Like his legs yeah. were stiff. He was just, he was just going off instinct. That was yeah. such a good fight. And then he sat down and I looked him in the eyes and I seen his body language. I was like, we got to wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> you cheating bastard. If hey, I it's, was known that it's legal. Trick. It's legal. It's I'll legal. tell you this, man. Watts, Watts is such a great guy too, and he's a great fighter. He wasn't able to train for that fight like I know he wanted to, because like I said, he's got a lot going on. He almost pulled out, dude. He's he did, he fought a great fight in spite of that, though. I was really proud of him. Yeah, yeah, that, that that was a really good tough fight. Yeah, he was exhausted in the second round. I could see it. I mean, just just him coming out in the third just really showed his toughness i mean because he was he looked like he was completely well done. i think in that first round you know what matt said bit, got to him a lot we all know that. and he fought angry i've never mm-hmm. seen him fight like that really he's usually pretty technical and fights really smart he just went after matt though i've not seen that and i think that played a big factor in why he was done yeah. after the first round yeah but also yeah. i think had he tried to sit back and box matt he would have lost a lot wider decision like i know matt's matt's supposed to be really good on the outside he was telling he, me that. Is, That's where yeah. he's comfortable. Yeah. He's long, yeah. too. Unfortunately, we keep fighting these monsters that just bowl their way in and make it <laughs> yeah. brawls. And like a, sm- what- a smaller heavy is not going to be able to do that to him because Matt's huge. But yeah. a fellow 6'4", 6'5", 290-plus guy, 
can come in there and try to bully around. But, mm-hmm. dude, Matt's another one that's just so strong. He was a power lifter before he was a fighter, was a professional power lifter at that, had his pro card, mm-hmm. and he was just a monster. The thing about him, too, that I've noticed in the fight with Dalen and the fight with Watts, the dude has no quit in him. He's got mad at all. Yes. Yeah. Like, you can hit him. Like, you're going to have to put him to sleep to make him stop yeah that's, that's the only way you're going to beat him i love seeing fighters like that because you it's the same thing as like kelly's kind of the same way it's all action all the time mm-hmm. they're not going to quit you're going to have to beat them yeah, yeah. that's the kind of champion <clears throat> you love to see yeah i think chris um into the heavyweights that chase already has that's going to be interesting we almost yeah. put him in the tournament as a replacement but we ended up not doing it because um who was it? i think i think we would have fought alex yeah alex, I, won uh, first, <clears throat> alex won the first round and then came to me it was like hey i want to go pro i'm ready so yeah. now and I heard through, through the great the, the reason we've already got somebody gunning for Mr. Chris, and it's uh, Tyler Gerald. Tyler Gerald's yeah. gunning for Chris. He, yeah. uh, he Tyler's, says he Tyler's probably up. he's probably going to be October because he hasn't been released yet. He's still he's got to be released by a doctor. For the I know. Time. What what's I've he got? Told, one fight. One fight. Let I've let him get a couple more, and he's then he can come for the strap. Yeah. I think I don't know what I don't know what we're gonna do with our straps, man. I don't know. I don't know if our how our that's something Chase and I haven't really spoke about, you know, like uh, his champions are more like, you know, the tournament champions. So it's like the 21 heavyweight champion, the 2022 heavyweight champion. And we have a promotional champion at New Line who defends their belt. You know, you know, we weren't doing the tournaments. And um, so I don't know. That's I like but I like what he's doing. I like the uh, the tournament champions. And then, you know, you know, maybe eventually have you know, heavy or have a professional, you know, Promotional champion. Really like well, the and Grand Prix he, style tournaments that he does. You know, yeah, you got really round really one, one event, round two, another. That's really cool. <clears throat> That's something and we've been like, trying to do at New Line, but we just kept, we were trying to do it in the MMA divisions. We just couldn't get enough guys. And then same thing with kickboxing. At one time, I almost had a 145 pound tournament set up, and then some of the guys were like, "Man, I want to wait." And then some of them were like, "Well, if that guy's in it, I'm I'm just I'm just gonna sit out." And um, so it kind of fell through. And then we were looking at doing it in boxing, and that's around the time that Chase started doing his tournaments. And I was like, "Well, I don't want to look like a copycat," so we didn't do it in boxing. So <laughs> it's uh, we never we never got around to uh, doing the tournaments. We did a cut. We did a uh, a one night heavyweight tournament one time, four man tournament. Had Adam Dingus win that. We did the. Uh, the Baileysville Brawl, which was a two-night uh, semi-pro tournament, we, you know, all the all the fighters fight for cash prize. Um, you know, that event turned out really well too. And that, you know, we found a lot of new talent for the for the uh, league there too. Um, that that yep. that's one thing that was good for we scout. You know, it was really a recruiting thing. We wanted to set up this two-night tournament just to find new fighters that you know we hadn't yeah. had. And it really worked out. We, you know, we filled up our boxing divisions with some dudes. So well, make no them, bones about it. Back. Chase, the <laughs> whole idea for Chase to do that tournament is to build a professional stable. Yeah. That, that's what he's about. He he wants to build him a professional stable of guys that already have a built-in fan base because we followed them mm. through three, four fights in this tournament. And then take mm-hmm. them pro locally, get them some wins, and then let's go fight on TV. And yep. it, it's not a bad business model at all, at all. And the group of talent that he has in the tournament right now, a lot of those guys that are even out of the tournament right now could go professional and do some things. Yeah. Like Gabe Lambert. You get Gabe Lambert, a good coach, like three to four months of good, straight professional training. And Gabe is going to be extremely hard to beat as a professional in 10-ounce gloves because his output for a big man is awesome. He's already showed he has grit. He's been dropped a couple times, got up, fought through it. And his punching power, James told me, Gabe hit him harder than anybody's ever hit him. And and James has been hitting them little tiny 6-ounce gloves in MMA a bunch. So comparing the two and saying Gabe still hits harder, like, yeah, Gabe needs to Gabe needs to turn pro. He needs to quit fighting for free and go pro. That's actually it makes me think of something interesting that I wanted to ask you before when we were talking about James. You know, you talk about a guy who's started in MMA, he's moved to boxing. What do you see stylistically like the differences between a guy who comes from an MMA background into boxing rather than a guy who's been doing boxing the whole time? Their feet. Um MMA fighters footwork is so wonky compared to a classical boxer's footwork. And I assume it's the wider stance. It's the wider stance. 
it's the more willingness to get square, to step around on a punch instead of bring your hip across. Um, they do weird things to faint kicks and stuff that I've learned more so coaching kickboxing now and stuff. But yeah, it's just, it's a lot of the balance issues and stuff. A lot of, a lot of MMA fighters, you'll notice when they box, they're off balance because they're real mm-hmm. forward heavy. They're ready to sprawl. They're ready to get those hips released out. And What are you talking about? My balance is impeccable. <laughs> Your, your, your I actually, it's wonderful. funny you mentioned that because when I transitioned and started really getting into boxing from being a grappler primarily, they had to tie my feet together all the time <laughs> because my stance was way too wide. Yeah, all the way out here. My feet together, yeah. And it helped a lot. I still do it though. I can't, I can't help myself. Oh, you saw my stance when I, when I did my little comeback fight. My, I was like in a 30 foot cage, I was taking up 28 feet of <laughs> my feet. I would like you apart. to analyze Keith Knows <laughs> boxing style, Teddy. That's There's what I want. I don't think I've told Teddy Bear the reasons I fight the way I do, but I'm not going to say it on here. But Elijah, you know, so I know we, we got secrets. We got we secrets, secrets that we're not telling anybody. No, I I know if, if you're oh, talking yeah. about what I think you're talking about. Yeah. 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 So, it, yeah, there's, there's I know why he, I, fight. Why, I know why he fights like that. Really. It's because he's a cocky bastard. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. He's, like, he, he's trying hit. to be Roy Jones Jr. In there. I'm the 280 yeah. pound slow 40 year old. <laughs> Roy Jones. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was, you scared me when you came out like that. I was like, what is he doing? What's he doing? Yeah. And I came out South Paul and that lasted about eight seconds. And I switched back over. Uh, it was yeah. fun, man. You know, it's, it's talking about us fighting, you know. So Teddy Bear here, he's fought for uh, Chase Hill. He's fought for New Line. I fought for Chase Hill. I fought for New Line. Elijah, you've only fought for New Line. So when are you going to come over and fight King of the Mountain State? I, I thought you were about to build up a fight between me and you. I was like, oh, hit, hit the brakes, Keith. <laughs> Can't, can't spring out on me. That. that would make me sad. I believe that fight would just make me sad. I wouldn't want to call it. Oh, I yeah, like you guys too much. Me, though, I don't know, man. I want to get back in there. You know, I took a loss in my last mm-hmm. one. I'm not really happy about the decision, but well, you it took was a fight, fight on like a two day notice as well. So, and you hadn't been training. And you had yeah, been- I think most people didn't know before that fight. I hadn't trained since, I don't know, it'd been yeah, over a month. Yeah, was January. that the legal spelling of that guy's name, too? How it is on Facebook. I believe so. It's his name, John, uh, but J apostrophe A H O N. We Jahan. call it Jahan. It's Jahan. J apostrophe H A H N. Okay. I, I thought it was like a, a John, but like in my head, I was pronouncing it boss. Like, John. <laughs> I hope I'm saying it. I've been saying Jahan. I hope I'm saying it right. And I'm not mispronouncing his name every time I say it. I need gotcha. what I really need. The way in my life does. Is a teddy bear breakdown of my fight. I want to know what I did wrong, what I need. Like, what do you think of that fight, Teddy Bear? How'd I do? I watched it twice. It's been a couple weeks since I watched it. I thought you won. Honest to God, I thought you won that fight. Um, you both, both your defenses were ass. <laughs> you, you both blocked punches with your face. Yeah, that's what I loved it. Our 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 uh, accuracy when he did the statistics. Mine was what like forty seven percent, and his was both like forty two. Yeah. It was yeah. high. You yeah. both landed so many punches. Are you yeah. not um, supposed to use all the misses? Were to block because them? They both threw a punch at the same time and missed, like hit gloves or something. <laughs> yeah. Like you're, I was really impressed with your ability to stay calm because he tried to be in your face and you just sat back and sat behind that jab. Bing, bang, that was bang. And then bing, the weirdest bang, part bang. about that fight. I've never experienced that, like fighting a brawler like that. I'm used to sparring guys who can box a little bit and like they're boxing with you. But he was just like, every time I'd go to throw, he's like right there. Yeah. yeah. So it was weird. I was like, you get the stepping, fuck away from me. You were coming forward with your jab and then he was coming forward with overhands and hooks. He did yeah, no. that one. When, when did he hit you with that uppercut? That uppercut that he threw from the lace. That was the uh, third third round. Oh, that he what? Hit me I that. thought I don't, it was a second. Nothing that, hurt me in that fight. That I didn't feel any of that. The only shot I felt was the very first overhand he hit me with. And I was like, okay, I better, that better get my good. shit together. Dude, that, that third round showed so much heart. Because you can see through the screen how tired you both mm-hmm. are. And he, he quit before you did. Like, I thought the third round wanted you the fight. Because... He was just ready to be done, and you just kept charging forward. Even though they didn't have a lot of steam on them, you were just bang, bang, bang. And then you guys would lay on each other. Then they'd break you, and then you would just step right back into him. That's what I thought won you the fight. I should be fair, actually. I think a big reason, usually my gas tank's not that terrible. 
I know I hadn't been training, but I expected I can make it three rounds. Yeah. But the story behind the story is uh, about three days before that fight, I tried to go get a little training in. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm not going to spar today. Too close to the fight. Old Matt Garretson came in. He's like, I'll spar with you. Let's go really light. I was like, Are you, we got to go light. And the dude tried to knock me out in training <laughs> like three days before my fight. I'd been in a fight. It felt like I was sore. Yeah. I was like, shit. The day well, of the fight, did, I was you asking asking about it. He was like, well, that's how we, and that's I was how like, far. Yeah. I was like, what's wrong with you, man? You piece of <laughs> shit. That's your buddy now. That's fine. I love Matt, but yeah. I don't know about him. <laughs> he whipped you. He, you know, like, Matt, you beat me up three days before my fight, man. Come on. I literally felt like I'd been in a fight. After that yeah. sparring session, I was sore. And like I told you that day of the fight, walking up the stairs at the hotel, my legs were dead. And I was like, uh oh, this isn't good. Yeah. I think I was telling you that we, you were talking about, well, I'm going to go get some training in. I was like, well, dude, I probably wouldn't. I said, I would probably just do like maybe a couple of wind sprints and get out of breath, but don't do anything that's going to make your muscles tired because, because you're just going to get sore. You're not going to recover in time for the weekend. I was like, you haven't done anything in like six weeks. Like don't, don't start working out now. You expect me to do wind sprints. Are you crazy? No. (laughs) If you see me running, you better run too because something's chasing me. Like That's I was, same. dude, I was, t- my advice same. to you was like, all you need to do is get your heart rate up a few times a day, get out of breath a few times a day, but don't do anything to make your legs tired. Don't make your arms tired. So you're, you're going to get nah, sore. I just you haven't, decided to go you fight a, a sweat in six weeks. <laughs> dude, it's, it's I, fun. Had in there. I was like, I can spar with Watts. I was like, I know Watts won't hurt me. won't go crazy. Yeah. He's a good sparring partner. And then old Matt walked in and I knew there was trouble. That's funny. <laughs> but, uh, that's another dude we haven't been talking about, you know, Justin Richwine. You know, he's he's our super heavyweight kickboxing champion. He also does boxing and MMA, and uh, yeah, he's he's wanting to be a part of this new this new thing. So he's uh, he's ready to come over and, and uh, show what he's got at King of the Mountain State. And uh, Justin Richwine's a solid fighter, and, and uh, Teddy Bear, you can attest to that. Um, I would like to see maybe one day you, you know, the two of you guys do a boxing match. You know, yeah, I'd love to see. That. Yeah, it's not you know. You know, I don't like rematches they always, but, you know, it's a different, it's a different sport. They got to well, do boxing I mean, and then yeah. they got to do MMA. No, we're not doing MMA. <laughs> we're setting up a trilogy here, Teddy. No, sir. Nope. I'm not getting kicked again in my life ever. <laughs> Dude, that I, fight was so interesting though. And I've never seen anything like it. Like he kind of turned it off there in the third round with the low yeah. kicks. And like, I know those uh, were rough. Fourth. It was in the fourth. He, oh, he, yeah, he kicked the shit out of me in the fourth. And like 30 seconds to go, he just started running from me. And he told me after the fight, he didn't want to do any permanent damage. He did, though. He already did. I still limp. How did you feel that next day walking around on that leg? Dude, the next month sucked. It was, dude, I shit you not. I'm not kidding. It was still bruising like five weeks later. <laughs> Oh my, did you get pictures? We need to get some pictures. I did, of yeah. Yeah, I got some pictures of it. It was it was probably I don't know, the first week of March before mm. the bruising was actually all the way gone. Maybe uh-huh. middle March. Yeah, it was it was nasty. I just thought of something else that we have to talk about. Now I'm running on borrowed time here because I've Keith, it's happened again. My car well, battery battery's died. dying. Oh no. It's dead. Oh, my, my dinner's done too, so we can wrap it up whenever you guys need to. But before we go. I want to talk about Jessica Emmerich's knockout. Dude. Yeah, yes. Dude. It was here. Let me, let me see if see, I can if I can do something. You some don't things. see a lot of like KOs in women's fights. You know, it's it's not a common thing. You know, you see some TKOs, but you don't see a lot of KOs in, in women's fights. Keith could probably edit the footage in here so people can well, that, watch it. That's what I'm doing right now. Give me one second. I figured that's what you were up to. It was one of the best knockouts I've ever seen, not only in women's mm-hmm. MMA, but in MMA period. I mean, that photo of the girl laying there with her, her eyes are wide open. <laughs> like, it was scary. Yeah. And, and Jessica fought for King of the Mountain State before. She fought um, with Amy Elkins. Is that who she fought? Can you, um, yeah, she did. Can you enable screen sharing for participants? Yeah, she fought Amy. That fight was on a, um, that was on like a week's notice too. And that was, that was real heavy. We didn't want to fight. She, Amy come down to 134. So we wanted to fight at 25. So we met there and she just, she manhandled Amy. She was just too fast, too good on the outside. I don't know there if I did go. it or not. Yeah, you did. 
How long has Jessica been training? Um, she's been. You guys see my screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Jessica Amrix, knockout of the night. Look there. Oh my God. We'll play it again. She breaks told, space off the cage. Left hook. Bing. I told Jessica a while back. You know, she's too scary. That's why she's got all these girls pulling out on her now. She might not have done. Should have so. done that. She needs to hold back. She's gonna scare everybody away from fighting her. I don't want to fight her now. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. She, Dude, she's a handful to spar even in the gym for, for mm. us giant dudes. Well, that's the thing. Like, she seems so damn dedicated, and she's there all the time training. She's like, it seems like she's living and breathing the fight game. Yeah, she's she, training she, she with is. Muscles. And she doesn't care. Kickboxing, boxing. Like, she's fought Muay Thai. She's a boxed. She does MMA. Obviously, that's her end game. She wants to be an Invicta or Bellator. <laughs> or even the UFC, like that, that's her end game is to be on a big stage as a professional in a cage, but she's just soaking in all the experience she can get right now, whether it be boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, all that. Women's women's MMA is so interesting right now because we're basically in the early, where the early stages were with, you know, men's MMA, because people can get away with having like a less amount of skill and they're more physical but yet you're seeing the rise of these technical female fighters like Valentina Shevchenko. I think Jessica could definitely make it to that level. Yeah. Oh, 100%. The pool isn't that deep. And I think she could rise quickly. Yeah. If she can get her, if she can just get her MMA record up 4 0, 5 0, you know, UFC will have some eyes on her. Well, you just take a look. She's at 115, right? Strawweight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you what take a look at the UFC's top 10 at Strawweight. It's not that deep. Once you hit number 10, 9, 8, oh, yeah. she's right there. I mean, she, yeah. she could be there soon. Yeah. Yeah. It's just hard. I, I've had trouble getting her fights. You know, I've been, I've been trying to get Jessica fights here. For a while, and um, that's the toughest everybody, issue. With MMA locally is just finding yeah, fights. Yeah, and anybody I do find, like it's it's trouble finding somebody down at one fifteen or one twenty five. And when I do, you know, they're they see her and they don't want any part of. It. Yeah. So, which I don't blame them, but it either. sucks. Just fight us. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you go into this sport, you should want to compete against the best. Especially yeah. with MMA, I know boxing is a little different. You yeah. know, when you, you're building people's records up, but MMA usually it's the best going after the best. That's what I love about it. Well, and the yeah, difference so- with MMA and boxing, I don't mean to talk over you, Keith, but in MMA you can almost go to any promoter and be like, "Hey, man, I want to fight," and they don't care if you're their guy or if you're not their guy. They'll put you with a good even matchup, and just they just want to make fights. In boxing, if you're not the promoter's guy the hell with you they're bringing you in for a win for one of his guys to build up and if you're too tough he's not going to match you like unless you unless you got money behind you or you got people behind you building you and protecting you you're going to be used do you think that's what's caused boxing to have that that drop off the map for a while you know the corruption in the sport the bad decisions you saw and then mma rose because i think it was always the best fighting the best you didn't have multiple Mm -hmm. champions things like that do you think that's the reason why mma kind of rose above boxing for a while well um i don't think mma ever rose above boxing mma was a new shiny toy and boxing was this thousand year old establishment and once everyone got over the bright shininess of MMA, boxing started to kind of just come back yeah. into the picture. Like, oh, hey, I'm here, guys. But, mm-hmm. um, but I, that's you had interesting something. fighters coming up too, like Fury, guys like Fury and Wilder. They, they, it's like a rebirth in the heavyweight division. Yeah, I yeah, love the, seeing it. The heavyweight division was definitely the most exciting has been in a long time. I would, I don't yeah. want to say the best because technically the fighters weren't they weren't the best tyson fury yeah he's an anomaly but if you drop anthony joshua in the well i shouldn't say mid 80s because mid 80s were kind of weak drop him in like the mid 70s or early 80s or the mid 90s is he a world champ still that does he beat a prime lennox lewis does he beat uh young baby mike tyson does he beat a trevor burbick like tyson fury even all them guys even this question does he beat a guy like ernie shavers who's got insane power and we've seen Joshua's chin falter. Yeah, we have. But I, yeah. also, I th- I think he beats Ernie. Ernie runs out of gas, and Ernie doesn't handle handle big guys real well. Yeah, that's an interesting I'm, thing too. How we've seen the heavyweights actually grow in size. You know, back in oh, I know back, I go it. all the way back to Dempsey. Look at him. He looks like he should be fighting at one seven, which he yeah. was. 
he it, uh, Jack Dempsey was 175, 180 pounds. And then five I'm thinking like that Taylor, I'm thinking that massive. at some point I'm thinking that at some point, and, and a lot of old school people are against it. You know, just like baseball making new rules, people were against it because it was you know this is the way it's always been. But with boxing, you know, there's a big difference in in a guy like like you get a dude that's like 220, 225 pound heavyweight. I don't care how good they are. You got Tyson Fury coming in at like six foot nine. He's faster than they are, and he's longer than they are he's better skilled than they are and how what's his weight around 300 pounds yeah yeah when he's, when he's trim he's, he's like about 270 70. yeah yeah i mean he could go he could get up into the 300s and um i mean well I mean, when he was going happen... through depression and that mental health crisis he went through mm -hmm. lost his title he got up to over 400 pounds it's unbelievable yeah. well and the so, thing is a lot of people mm -hmm. i didn't mean to cut you off again uh, a lot, a lot of people. I'm doing that a lot. There, there's a delay. You quit I saying you're sorry. I cut. I've cut you <laughs> off like 20 times. I don't give a shit. That's all right. I, I'm a, I'm a kind guy. It's what I do. I didn't. They didn't call me teddy bear because I'm an asshole. But um, but no. The thing that people people are like, well, anybody that big can dominate like that. No, they can't. Look at Nikolai Valuev oh, from yeah. the from the early yep. 2000s. He was seven, seven foot footer. one, 330 pounds. Not very much fat on him at all really good boxer did absolutely dick he yeah, became he, move too. he became too, almost too big to move became an alphabet suit okay. champ uh they ripped off a 95 year old evander holyfield against him and then rulsan chayev beat him and what chayev do absolutely nothing mm -hmm. just faded off into the distance and then you got guys like ty fields ty fields they build up to 44 and one and um with like 42 knockouts and it's back when uh versus you remember versus yeah. the channel versus back mm -hmm. when they had fights on mondays and on fridays and stuff and they built him up he was this big ex-basketball player and like i said he got to 44 and one had like 30 first round knockouts and they put him in with monty barrett who was a notorious fringe contender and Monty stopped him in two rounds. Yeah. Like, just because you're huge doesn't mean you can do what Tyson Fury's doing. I mean, yeah. Deontay Wilder's just as big as him, looks just as athletic as him. Mm -hmm. But, yes, yeah, so I, did, I didn't mean to get passionate. I'm thinking, I'm thinking though, with, you know, the way the weights work, like, eventually they're going to have to add a new weight class or just adjust the existing weight classes. You well, know, there's such a – They did. Like, heavyweight's so, so big, you know. at Like, what was it before, like 175 and up heavyweight or something like that years ago? Yeah. I think it was 130 and under, 130 to 175 and 175 and up when there was light, middle, heavy, yeah. like in the in the 20s. But mm -hmm. uh, WBC has installed that Bridgerweight division. Bridgerweight. Yeah. Do you remember uh, that story? I think it was over in England. That kid, his name is Bridger, that stopped the Rottweiler from attacking his sister, got his face all yeah. mauled up. Well, mm -hmm. WBC, they installed It's basically a junior heavyweight division which has yeah. existed in Africa for a while. But um, they installed, they call it Bridger weight, and it's 201 to 225. I like that. And it, it's a neat little division, but I don't think, yeah. like you said, it's heavyweight's been heavyweight forever. You're going yeah. to have trouble breaking the mold. Mm -hmm. You know, what you were talking about earlier with value of, it made me think of something. I watched a really interesting movie about boxing not long ago that I'd never heard of. It's from 1956 called The Harder They Fall with Humphrey Bogart. It's about the story, the real life story of Primo Carnera. Yeah. Which was another situation just like that. You know, the mob controlled his career. He was this big, giant Italian heavyweight. The mob mm -hmm. took control of his career, had him up against cans. You know, he was like a soup can champion. And then he ran into, uh, I think, Max Bear. Yes, sir. He got hurt. dropped 11 times in one fight. Yep. In two yep. rounds. That's old Jeff Bodine's daddy. <laughs> Absolutely sad movie about boxing that people yeah. sleep on people talk about rocky and stuff but that that's a rough one dude uh, see the dark side of boxing that's a good one to watch well a newer one that's not from the 1950s it's from the 2000s maybe 2000 exactly the price of glory either one of you guys seen that mm -mm. it has jimmy smith's in it and um has jimmy smith and a couple other decently big actors i think ron perlman plays a promoter in it but or the guy that looks like ron perlman that's a b actor but anyway it's about these brothers like the opening scene is them at the california state silver gloves so they're 14 to 15 year olds and then johnny is the littlest brother who doesn't he's going to be a football star he doesn't even box well they have a little kid fall out of the championship and they need someone to step in little eight-year-old and johnny's like oh yeah dad I've, I've been watching my brothers and 
he he does his little shadow boxing so they put him in well fast forward johnny's 18 about to go pro whatever ron perlman is a cd promoter and wants him and a lot of dirty dark stuff happens and the other two brothers are both undefeated professionals that the dad's trying to build toward title shots and stuff one doesn't want to listen to dad one is loyal to a fault to dad some shit happens with johnny with and this promoter and it's real tragic the other one breaks off from dad and goes with the cd promoter and takes title fights before he's ready and becomes a fringe contender and it's it's a really good movie i'm terrible at describing shit but it's super good well my quality you look for in a commentator movie probably (laughs) gonna fall out of here soon let's end this on a fun note what's the best best boxing movie of all time i'll let you go first keith oh lord um, I don't know, man. I watched the fighter today. That's a oh, there goes Elijah. Uh, I watched. I just watched the fighter today. Uh, you know, I watch that movie about once every six eight months. Um, I'm not gonna say it's the best, but kind of drawing a blank right now. That's pretty good. A lot yeah. of people sleep on bleed for this. The Vinny Paz story. I haven't seen that one yet, dude. It's it's really good too. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's a lot of good ones, man. I when I was younger, I always liked Tyson, and now that I watch it when I'm older, I'm like, yeah, it's not that good of a movie. But the, the Michael Jaw yeah. White one. Uh, is that is that who was in it? I don't know. I can look it up, but I know Michael yeah. Jaw White plays Tyson in one of the movies. It might it might be that one. Um, and I believe they're working on a new one. I think Jamie Foxx is playing the role of Tyson. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when that one's supposed to come out, but you know, that's you know, with Jamie Foxx, you know, that's going to be a nice movie. Um, there, I mean, I'm, there's some other ones, man. I'm just kind of drawing a blank on them right now. Uh, like I, I, plenty of them. I no, I'll tell you the re- the best boxing movie, Real Steel. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, that's a good one. That's my son Gabriel. That was his favorite movie for like four years. So we watched <laughs> it like three or four times a week. Yeah, I guess at that point you're going to start to get tired of it. So yeah. you're going uh, to not, not appreciate it good. quite as much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I'm if I'm scrolling through Netflix or something, I just can't find anything to watch. You know, I run across that. Like, yeah, why not? So Got Hugh go. Jackman over to the side. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> That's it, man. Well, man, uh, it's, it's been good. I know you got dinner waiting on you, getting cold behind you. Um, any 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 uh, last words on this one? I know we're gonna do, we'll do it again here in a few days. I'm sure. No, uh, yeah, we gotta, no. We we got to get. I, I need to start talking to some more of these guys. Um, man, we haven't even mentioned Gary Rowland today. We haven't mentioned Matt Adams. None of these guys. Like Gary Rowland, dude. That's that's a guy that I'm looking to get. You know, looking to see him back in there. I know he's he's busy. Um, he's in uh, the National Guard, I believe. Yeah, and yeah. He went through around. officer school and stuff through like the first four yeah, or five months of this year. Months. But yeah, man, like, dude, this 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 merger, man, this is really exciting. So much talent on both sides, and uh, you know, we're gonna throw Denzel Chapman into the mix with all these guys and see where he fits in. Um, so just a lot, you know, a lot going on. But uh, yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to how it all shakes out. Yeah. So, Man, uh, Justin, thanks for coming on. We'll do this Absolutely. again. Hopefully, hopefully, Elijah can get his car jumped. Yeah. Get back on the road. For All sure. Right, thanks. Thanks, All everybody, right. for watching. See ya.